Hello guys, I'm gonna talk about my lens collection today. At this point, feel as it feels like not just a tool to shoot photo and video, but also a, a collection, like uh, like paintings or something, watches, luxury items that you collect. So yeah, it's not many, but it starts feeling like that because I have i do have a lot of lens that uh, are awesome but i don't really get used to the uh get to use them every single day so kind of like just sit there and being pretty so let's start from the very first lens i had that came with uh, a7 it's 28 to 70 millimeter lens oss image stabilized so it's very nice you should video with this and I shot a lot of stuff with this at the beginning of my photography journey as well as a, a video making journey. I use this lens a lot and, and you can see this white stuff on the focus ring and zoom ring. It's, uh, it's flower. It's, uh, once I made a video of uh, how to make Chinese dumpling, a kind of a parody, a kind of a uh, kind of fun, uh, funny video type of stuff I made a horrible horrible dumplings very bad tutorial and I was uh, uh, doing the uh, making dumpling and use my hands on this lens so kind of got the flower just got stuck on it and never come off uh, I never cared to try to clean it uh, right now the condition is well the lens itself is okay and zoom ring is fine, totally okay, but the focus ring is uh, not working well. The focus ring is kind of a, this this rubber ring is kind of uh, slipping off. I a, sometimes you turn this, it doesn't really change the focus. Like it doesn't connect well with the wire inside or something. Some something is wrong. And sometimes when I change the uh yeah when i change focus ring it will move uh the zoom ring along with it so it's kind of broken so um you can't use uh many focus on this anymore it's really broken but i never used the manual focus on with this lens anyway so it doesn't matter that's a solid quality uh, good lens very basic it's f 3.5 to 5.6 a very basic zoom uh, kit lens that covers everything day-to-day -day shoot uh, for lens like this kit lens you can't really ask a lot maybe sometimes maybe someday I will still use that but I don't I don't really I don't know I just can't think of a single occasion that I will use this instead of uh, these awesome collection all right next <clears throat> Uh, I bought this uh, 50 mil. This is a Sony 50 mm lens, f 1.8. It's a wonderful, uh, wonderful little beast of bokeh. Uh, definitely, definitely underappreciated. A little bit in my hand. I should shoot uh, way more than I do right now with this lens, because it's really versatile. It shoots a beautiful uh, portrait as well as landscape. And it's sharp as fuck. It's it's awesome on my A7 for the photography, and it can also be mounted on my A6300 to use it as a, a longer photo focal range uh, portrait lens. And it has great bokeh, and it's out of focus, so it's very convenient. Although the out of focus could be a little bit slow. I mean, especially when I first bought it. I had to do the firmware up update, otherwise it, it, it was just pretty slow. I mean, um, I, I wasn't really into fast photography and f sports and stuff, so it didn't matter that much, but um, yeah, it's good enough for me. Um, yeah, definitely will use it more. The only problem is when you shoot video, this doesn't this lens doesn't have a, a image stabilization, so when you put on a 6200, it it does shake, especially when you shoot 4K, it's going to be shaky and wobbly and uh, all those problems will come. Next. 
All right, let's talk about this Canon lens. Actually, I bought the Samyang 40 millimeter lens and the Samyang 85 millimeter millimeter lens first. Um, and then after a, a little over a year, I uh, switched. I mean, um, I swapped lens with someone. I find someone to uh, exchange lens with. I give him my two of my Samyang lenses, all my Samyang lenses, and. Uh, I got this Canon 10 to 22 in return. Actually, it's a very efficient trade, objectively speaking, because he used a 7 II, which is full frame. And this lens on a full frame is only, if you use, use a crop mode, it's gonna be only 15, 16 millimeter length, uh, wide. So I give him my Samyang 14 millimeter lens, which means uh, it's a full frame lens, so which means he gets two millimeter more, one or two millimeter uh, wider field of view, and uh, and also the fourteen mil semi on fourteen mil on my A6200 is gonna be equivalent to twenty one on full frame, uh, as opposed to this one on my A7 A6300 will be. 15 mil, so I get a lot of benefit. I get a lot wider view uh, as well. So both of us get much uh, a, a wider option, a wider shot, <clears throat> wider lens. So it's good for both of us. And uh, I also give the 85 uh, 1.4 the semi lens because I just fed, I'm fed up with the manual focus. But this lens is, um, uh, well, it works perfectly in uh, the focus, autofocus works perfectly in photography, but uh, when you shoot a video, it's better to shoot the manual focus, but I didn't mind because the focus, the Canon focus, manual focus system is pretty, pretty nice. You can see there's a indicator of uh, the distance and where you focus. It's really nice to have, have a much better control of the focusing than using so Sony uh, manual focus lens and uh, uh, comes comes with this uh, come light adapter that that he used he used uh, the guy I traded with um, so this adapter was included in our deal this is very nice I shoot uh, a lot of uh, landscape and uh, also it's, it works very well for vlogging Although I haven't haven't vlogged a lot, and it kind of uh, <clears throat> kind of it's kind of replaced by my uh, new Sigma sixteen millimeter lens. When this lens um, arrived, I kind of uh, kind of take place of a lot of it replaced the uh, eighteen to one hundred five. It replaced the ten to twenty two. It's like you have sixteen mil. It's so versatile. It's wide enough, and you don't really need the the other wide lens. You don't need to go to Go to ten millimeter. I don't know. I feel like kind of a, their function. The functions are kind of overlapping. All right. Not so much of a ten to twenty-two. I traded this lens very recently, a few months ago. So um, there's not that much to say. The only problem is, okay, I, just, I actually there's a problem. The image. Um. Okay. The center is very sharp, but the uh, image on the edge is really soft. On this lens is kind of even blurry you can you can say it's blurry um, around the edge uh, and no matter when you shoot video or photo um, I don't know if it's because of the adapter or something because the lens is itself is pretty good lens it's got about five hundred dollars brand new it's not that bad it doesn't have image stabilization though uh, <clears throat> but yeah when you shoot it approximately in, in in the middle just in the in the center it's very sharp but uh, around the edge is really soft and blurry whatever you shoot so but it doesn't matter that much uh, when i shoot to um i'm i will mainly use it to shoot vlog i suppose in the future all right i just accidentally turned off my phone damn it all right we're back uh so i will use this to shoot vlog primarily Vlog and just landscape, so it doesn't matter that much, I guess. I mean, oh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll make a review video someday. Okay. Next. <clears throat> God, so many lenses. 18 to 105. Let's talk about 18 to 105. 
it has been my favorite lens until the Sigma 16 arrived. All right, so this is my second most uh, favorable lens right now. Super duper versatile. It goes from 18 to 105, duh, and a constant f-stop f4. And um, yeah, 18 is about to 27 millimeters on uh, full frame, and 105 is uh, oh gosh, I don't remember 130 something or 150. I don't remember, but it's very good range, and you can use a clear image zoom on a6300, and it zooms in a lot. It can, especially in video, can be very, very helpful to shoot uh, objects far away. And it's a great, great video lens because first the f stop is a f4 constant. And uh, second is you have power zoom here. You can change the zoom like this, like a video camera. Uh, so it's very nice, smooth zooming. Uh, I use this a lot uh, for vlogging and general purpose day to day. If I go on a trip, I will bring this for sure for just all around uh, purpose. But now, since I've recently, most recently, I bought this 16, uh, Sigma 16 lens. I started using this lens a lot because of the uh, gorgeous f1.4 uh, aperture. And uh, if you want to shoot wide angle and still have bokeh, this is the only lens, the only option you have, and the best option. F1.4 is crazy. Trust me, it's crazy. And it shoots. It gets really close up to the subject. You can the uh, the minimum focus distance is really close probably, probably like this much from the, 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 the camera about this much so you can shoot something really close up and uh, throw everything in the background into into blur into oblivion it's a great lens great fucking lens i use this um every day uh, every time i shoot I, at first i would choose this if it doesn't uh, if it's not the best of focal range, I would choose another lens, but this is my go-to lens now. Usually I just let it be on the camera, but uh, I did some tests today, so I put the 18-105 on my camera. Yeah, very nice. 16 is um, equivalent to 24 on full frame. It, I mean, it's not ultra wide, but I, I think it's, the, it's a very decent wide angle. It's like a um uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah when we should vlog 16 works perfectly well perfectly well like your face is um, a very nice proportion to the entire image it's not like uh, uh ultra wide everything is uh, twisted you, you can still uh, be kind of in the focus of the entire scene uh, but you do have the uh, background so it's a good good focal range the only thing is that when you are far from the subject, it, it, actually, you don't get much bokeh. You don't get, like, because it's wide angle, right? So when you have some distance from the subject, the bokeh is not that noticeable. So uh, you may get disappointed if you want to shoot a portrait that uh, incorporated with a, uh, some background and you want a great bokeh, no, it's not going to work. You better use a 50 millimeter lens to shoot that kind of a portrait. This one, if you want a bokeh, you have to get close. You have to get really close to the subject. And it's, 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 it is its an advantage as well as a disadvantage because you can get up close, get very nice, interesting shots, but you don't want to distort people's face when you shoot portraits, so you can't really get that up close to people's face like this much so uh, in that sense you cannot really fully utilize the bokeh uh, <clears throat> of 1.4 for portrait uh, maybe you, you, you shoot some interesting way you know i just want to exaggerate exaggerate people's facial feature i just want to make their nose look big and such or shooting from an interesting angle yeah why not use this uh yeah, I'm still trying trying to figure out the the position of these lens, trying to figure out the, the relation between these lenses, which one I should should use in in certain situations. I'm still in the stage of uh, figuring out stuff, so it's uh it's really relatively young, so 
let's let's see. And then we have this uh, 85, Sony 85 1.8, and uh, it's great. It's awesome lens. The sharpest lens I own, definitely the sharpest among all the lenses I own. Um, great bokeh, 85. It's perfect for portrait, and of course you can shoot landscape. Uh, of course you can shoot street. You can stalk people, and he has this button. This uh, you can hold this to hold the focus, and this is control the autofocus and menu focus. Great lens, but I don't use it much because once I uh, since I bought this lens, I haven't really shot uh, many portrait sessions. So, I kind of uh, my portrait shooting. Uh, passion kind of died out, so I just I, I haven't used this lens as much. But this is definitely if you want to shoot portrait, this is definitely the go-to lens, and it's uh, much much cheaper than G Master, and the quality is not so different. And uh, if you want to autofocus, this is lens you you go for. And I used to own the Samyang 85, and it was a great lens as well. But I just want autofocus, and. He, f1.4 to f1.8 is not a big deal it's fast it's sharp it looks good and it's it's light it's much lighter than Samyang 85 smaller glass <laughs> all right so that's the entire collection of my lenses uh, I don't know just felt like talking about it because you know they just sit on the shelf all day and doing doing nothing so why not shoot a video about them uh make them worth their existence um yeah so next i'm trying to figure out the <clears throat> god i'm trying i'm hitting the lens itself uh, yeah whatever cheap lens i don't care yeah, I'm trying to figure out this and uh try to use more 50 and try to figure out the 60 mil. Um, yeah, I need to play more with the 60 mil, and then hopefully I get some chance to shoot with 85 because I really haven't used it a lot. It's kind of a waste of money. And uh, 18 to 105, it's always a good lens to use. If I'm on on, on a trip, I'll definitely use that. All right. Yeah. So the, the, the most contradictory contradicting thing is um all right so these 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 three lenses they both cover wide wide end of the APS C lens, APS C camera. So these three are kind of uh, competing with themselves. Uh sometimes I I just don't know which one to use. Obviously, if you want a maximum wide angle, you use this. But sometimes I just can't decide. Should I use ultra wide angle or is it sufficient to just use 16? Or do I want some telephoto, uh, telephoto photos, telephoto super long shots? Then I, I, I use this. It's very difficult to choose between the, these three because they cover very similar range. This is 18 mil. It's a little bit wider than 16, but still it's decent for day to day shoot. Yeah. Let me know what, what do you think, uh, do you own some of these lenses and how do you use them and when do you use them? Give me some of the advices. Um, right now I can't decide which one to use very often, it's, 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 it's a problem, it's, it's, it bothers me. Like, which one should I put on my camera, damn it. Or maybe I should get another APS-C camera. I should get a, a 6500 and that way I can use at least two lenses out of three at the same time. So that will be much better. But we'll see. Um, my goal is to get uh, uh, upgrade my A7 into uh, A7 III or A7R2. It's going to cost uh, like uh, $2,000, but let's see. Let's see if that will happen. Or maybe I'll just go to A6500. A6, no, I want to upgrade full frame, so go for the full frame. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I got way too many APS-C lenses that I can use <laughs> more than I can use. All right, it's, it's, that, that, that's that's this video. Gosh, I shot this video on my phone, smartphone. So I'm sorry if it is shaky. See you. Bye bye.